Hey, there, Paul? Say a loud amen if you're there. Amen. amen. Let us read this in unison. Genesis chapter 32 verses 22 to 32. Please begin. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the Jimbro and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled the man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, and he said, name. And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, other name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. And as he passed over Peniel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore the children of Israel eat not of the sin which ran, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, and to this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh, in the sign you that shall, shall we pray our loving lord thank you once again for these uh, opportunities this great blessing is lord that once again we can study your word i pray that you will help me guide me as i stand behind the pulpit lord preach and teach your word to your people give us the understanding this is all as jesus name amen thank you paul you may be seated so again i uh, I'm really thankful to the Lord also for the uh, wisdom that he gave me. And uh, as what I'm telling you, I don't have any experience when it comes to administering in that work that was given to me. But by the grace of God, uh, he's really good in uh, giving me wisdom in ideas and uh, doing such a thing. Uh, you know, uh, Sometimes, lahok-lahok na kung anong sasabihin sa akin. I-instruct, tatawag na, mag-message minsan, you do this, you do this. Siyempre, kukunta ko si Milka, kagawin mo ito. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But again, praise the Lord for that. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, this, uh, again, uh, blessings that we have, we really have to appreciate this. No? Not all the people that have jobs right now, nowadays, especially those people in the Philippines. So, let's pray and be faithful of what we're doing for Him. Amen. So, here in this verse, uh, it's very familiar. And uh, we have studied this many, many times. But, actually, I prepared about uh, three messages on this uh, chapter alone. But, of course, I'm not going to give all of those <laughs> three messages this afternoon, but I will just be sharing to you some important things that really inspired me and challenged me. Uh, to tell you honestly, this is not my message. Okay? I just uh, got this and uh, put it by heart. Now, once I studied, uh, when I studied this one, uh, it really challenged me and blessed me a lot. You know, let me get this once again uh, as what Brother Alice is always telling. Nobody is perfect. Amen? But by the grace of God, as we continue to move on, as we continue to uh, take the task that God is preparing and is giving to us, we can always encounter such things. Or, uh, I would say, challenges along the way that we're taking. But you know what? God is always faithful that He will not allow His children okay? To be, uh, I would say, uh, to fall 
on the ground for a very long period of time. Some of us might be, others might be uh, experiencing it right now, but God is placing us into that place because He is teaching us something in order for, for us to learn. That later on in our life, it will be a great blessing to all of us. Now what we can see here, as we go here in verse 1, and, when, and Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. So, so uh, we can uh, see here in this topic, in this uh, verse here. Now we can see here that uh, God, I mean, the angels met Jacob. You know, the life of Jacob, he's a deceiver, he's a cunning man. But what we can see here is that the grace of God is always extending towards him. The same thing in, for each every one of us as well. Because of God's grace, that's the reason why we are here. It's because of God's grace why we, are given, we were given this opportunity and these great blessings that we really cannot uh, uh, measure off. That's how, our, that's how great our God is. Now, and when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place, Manai. Now we have to understand that these are the angels that uh, keep some accompan accompanying Jacob for a very, very long time. No? The God, uh, the angels of, of God that were ministering in the life of Jacob. In verse 2, we can see here that Jacob sent messengers before him because uh, uh, Jacob found out that uh, his brother Esau is uh, coming uh, towards his place. And of course, it's been about 20 years that his mother didn't even uh, send a report, a message of what really happened uh, going back to their, at their place. So he still thought that the Ezo is coming in order to kill or to destroy him. You know what? Here in verse 10, Jacob sent messages before him to Ezo, his brother, and to the land of Seir, to the country of Edom. Verse 4, And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye say, Thus shall ye speak unto my lord Esau. The servant Jacob said thus, I have sojourned with Laban, and say there, until now. You know what? You know what the story, right? How many years he stayed in the la uh, at the house of Laban? Okay? But actually, if you're going to uh, really study what happened there, he was able to take his own medicine. No? He's a cunning man. He's a deceiver. But he was deceived by his own father-in-law. No? He didn't love Rachel so much. But on, after seven years of his labor... Towards the family, okay, Leah was given to him. So he labored another f seven years, but again, because of his love. It seems that seven years is just a short period of time. Didn't mind anything, the labor, how hard the work was during those days. Now we have to understand that the uh, climate in, this, uh, in, in the Orient uh, place during those times, it's not the same as the climate that we have here. It's really timid. It's really hot. But again, because of his love. Again, verse 5, And I have oxen. This was his instruction to his servants. And as his flocks and men servants and women servants, I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. We have to understand this, that uh, Jacob is not actually a uh, uh, bragging uh, something here but again he wants to uh, show to Esau that he didn't need anything anymore towards him because God has blessed him when he was in the house of Laban but again here in verse 7 then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and, div and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and herds and the camels into two Bands. Now, th this was a, a very uh, a tricky decision, but of course, a kind of decision that what happened here. Because remember, prior to this chapter, God instructed him 
okay, that uh, he can return into the uh, uh, at Bethel actually, and God wants him to return into that uh, right place for him to do, uh, to, to live together with his family. You know what? If you really trusted God in our life, there's no need for us to fear. Amen. Nothing can hurt. Us. Nobody can hurt us, and nobody can do something bad against us, knowing that God is always on our side. But what happened here? Why he was afraid? Because of his past uh, mistakes that he did to his brother Esau. Here, verse eight, and said, "If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape." So it's really wise, right? <laughs> I know I'm not talking about the wise, but we can see here in the word of God. But wise when it comes to Filipino term terminology. And Jacob said, "O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said this unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee." This is not the time that the Jacob spoke to God. I'm not worthy of the least of all the mercies of all the truth which thou hast shewed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become to bass. Let me tell this to you, brothers and sisters in the Lord, that we are not worthy of what we have right now. Yeah. Amen? That's why we have to be very thankful for everything. That's a good message that we have heard this morning, and it's really timely. Be thankful for everything. Some of us may not appreciate because you may say, I've been working for uh, more than an hour right now. I would say, I'm working eight, nine hours. Uh, what is this? Uh, oh, wow. I don't know what to do. But hey, try to figure it out. There's something in there that we really cannot see. Now, in verse 11, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. I, I believe this is a very sincere prayer. No? You know, sometimes when we have big problems, this is a time that we can kneel down and come to God and pray sincerely. Seriously. Amen? But I hope that we don't need those times where you know, We figure out that we are experiencing these uh, hard problems and that's the time that we come closer to God. What we need to do is to come closer to Him from time to time. Amen? And in large verse 13, there that, night, that same night and took of that which came to His hand and a present to Esau, his brother. Do you know, there are times that God will really take something from us. Amen? Those things that we are holding on, those things that we cannot uh, uh, release, okay? that really bothers, our, uh, bothers us in our service towards God. 200 she goes and 20 she goes, 200 use in the ear, huh? use and 20 rums, 30 milk cam camels uh, with their colts, 40 kind or. I'll have to read this one. And ten bulls, twenty shiazes, and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, and every drove by themselves. And said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. You know what? If he really trusted God after his prayer, you know what happened here? You know? After that prayer, he made his own will and decision again. If he really trusted God, he must be on the front, not at the tail. Amen? Of that group. Para bang, oh, maninigurado. After ng prayer, naninigurado ka. Di ba? You know, this is our problem sometimes, right? Ikaw, paulit-ulit lang to. Meron natin decisions na ginagawa. Ang gusto natin gawin ay pinapa, pa, 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 uh, we're just giving it to God. Lord, please approve this. Ganun tayo eh. Amen? You know, and he commanded the foremost saying, When he saw my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou, and whither goest thou, and whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, 
Let it be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my Lord Esau. And behold, also he is behind us. Verse 19. And so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall you speak unto Esau when you find him. <laughs> See? And say, Moreover, behold, thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me. And afterward, I will see his face with adventure he will accept of me. So when the present over before him, and himself lodged that night in the company. You know, in the Orient times, oh, enemies, if you, example, if you are my enemy, I'm not going to accept your gift. That's for them. Except we are close related, or we're friends. You know what? This is a symbol of his, uh, something like, uh, uh, peace offering for Esau. But you know what? No matter how we do our own way, God's way is always the best. Amen? Amen. You know, from our limited point of view, as what I've said, some, it might be sour. Okay? It would not be right. But again, it's not that we aren't saved or redeemed, but again, God has already taken care of our life. He's been taking care of our uh, worries, those things that bothers us most. And again, we have to understand that God is giving us job. To do. But again, no matter how we respond, we have to re respond in a way that pleases God. Not how we respond according to our own will. There are times when God permits trials. The same as what He gave to Job. Amen? And there are also times when He imposed upon uh, ourselves as the case of what He happened to Ananias and Sapphira. And also, uh, there are those uh, time, uh, or I would say in a place or in a circumstances that, uh, or some circumstances that God is giving to us. The same as what he did to the life of David and Goliath. But again, and sometimes without thinking, we create our own. But you know what? Let's try to consider the life of Jacob. Amen? Here in verse 22, when he wrestled, when God, I mean, wrestled towards him. You know, the things he wrestled with aren't like that. There are, there are things that we know that it is, uh, these are the things that uh, uh, really, uh, most, uh, I mean, uh, bothers the direction towards our service uh, to our God. Like money. Amen? Like, you know, I don't really know why, why, why is it that sometimes if we don't have money, it really affects us much. Right? And that is really true. We have to be honest in that. Amen? But something like, I don't have money right now. Don't talk to me. <laughs> or even getting along with others. Now let me try, uh, let me remind this to you, that we really cannot please people. But for me, I really don't care. As long as uh, you are doing, as long as I am doing the will of God, as long as I don't care. Amen? But you know, we have to understand that God is aware of our difficult situation. 
He's aware with that. Why? Because it means that we have a job to do. Let's take a look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 17 to 18. Let's go there, please. For our light affliction, light, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Why we lose not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. God is very much aware of our struggles, our difficulties, our problems in life, and everything. He's aware of that. That's why you don't have to say that God is not, uh, is not with me anymore. God left me alone. But again, the question is not removing them, but what? Using them in accordance to the will of God. That's how we do these things. Like what Apostle Paul did to the thorn in the flesh. He asked God thrice that God will remove that thorn in the flesh in his life. But God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. We have some struggles. We have some weaknesses in our lives. Amen? Why? Because without those weaknesses, we may not recognize the goodness of God in our lives at all. That's the purpose why we have those weaknesses. That's why the problem is that people lost their awareness that God is dealing with them, that God is calling them to do something. Again, I don't know what your future would be. But all I know, if you're always in the will of God, then you will have a bright future. But if you're outside the will of God, then you will expect great troubles along the way. But I'm not saying that if you are in the will of God, you will not experience troubles anymore. No. Everybody will experience troubles. Amen? Because our life is full of what? We're, we undergo this... Uh, Lessons. That's why the question is how you define them says about a lot about you. So how you define your faith? What is the direction and purpose of your life? What's really the purpose of why you are here? Amen. Praise be to God, those who are left here. I know your purpose. But sad to say, those people who are not here anymore, now we know their purpose, why they're here. Kasi madaling sabihin eh. Yes, I, I will stay here for the ministry. Pero dumating na yung hirap sa buhay. Ano, oh, sana. See? We cannot mock God. We cannot deceive God. What is really in your heart? Amen? I don't have it tonight now. Do I still need to continue for the ministry? But again, the degree to which you have surrendered your will and life over the care of God what you're praying for, what you hope to achieve in your life. Of course, to tell you honestly, me and my wife, we're preparing something for our son. Yes, we've been doing that. We're preparing, of course, together with prayer. There's nothing wrong with that, Naaman. We must have goal. God gave us wisdom as well. Intelligence to do something. But again, still, everything is in the hands of God. What you hope to achieve in your life, your attitude, is it good or bad with those people around you? 
Amen. <laughs> Others might say, ikaw kasi badalas, medyo magaspang ka magsalita eh. Alam ka na may please kita. Lalambutin ko yung pagsasalita ko every time I will talk to you. Ganito ako dinisign. I'm just kidding. Our struggles are not to be defined by worldly people or measures. Succeeding over people in the world or succeeding in the world is no measure of success by God. Amen? You've seen those people who are not saved and they have a better life compared to you. You will say they're successful. No, don't compare the success in this world. Compare to the success that God will give to you soon or later on. Amen? We don't have that much compared to those people, to, all, to other people around here in Simrip. But praise the Lord. We are joyful. We're happy. We're, con- we're contented. All those things that God has given to us. In Matthew 6.31, please. Matthew 6.31. Why we looked not... This testing, testing. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or with all, wherewithal shall we be clothed? You know, what we are after is strength in our struggles. That's what we need. In our vision or in our purpose. You know, once those problems will be laid down, you cannot do anything. But you have to face it. And, by the, and with God's help, you will be able to overcome those pains that you're experiencing right now. It's really, it's not easy. It's not easy. But again, so how do you do that? Let's go to 22. And, and he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the four Jabob. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. <coughs> Point number one here. Be aware of the ways in which God is doing in your life. What happened here? Okay. This is not the time that God really wanted something in the life of Jacob. Amen. You know, If you're going to read the prior chapters in this, okay, we can see how Jacob were able to uh, uh, do those uh, things that are really not pleasing in the eyes of God. But again, take a look at this. He rose up that night and took his two wives and two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the four Jabu. Again, poor Jabu here simply means emptying. No. You know what? We really cannot come to God okay, if our lives is full of ourselves. Full of you. Full of self. Full of own will. Full of selfishness. If you remember, Jacob had stolen his brother's birthright. And up to this time, there was anxiety between the brothers. But again, and they were about to meet during this time. And then if that wasn't enough, again, what happened here? A stranger here met Jacob. And there was struggle here between the two. 
take note. And Jacob was left alone. You know, there are times that you really need to be alone. When God is dealing us, it is a, a blessing that we must be alone. Talking to Him. Asking something to Him. But again, what Jacob did not know here that God already arranged this event. It serves us here as a starting point in this life. Okay? And the question is this. Are we not marked by our own circumstances? Amen? The day you were saved. How about that? Somebody says, you don't get your rathers in life. Our goal and ambitions change when these things happen. It changes everything. But again, it molds us. Hello, those problems that we are experiencing, it helps us a lot. That's why those problems are also blessings. Not only it, it will mold us, but it also shapes us. It shapes us. Amen? It might destroy other people, but again, it can make us stronger in this life. I also experienced great problems in my life. But I really cried to God. Because when it comes to decision making, basta basta na ako. Uh, pastor knows that. I'm not thinking. As long as gusto ko, ginagawa ko. That was the time. Inis na inis na yung misis ko. Sa akin. And I really, I really struggled that, that time. But again, as we move on to those stairs, reaching towards our goal, we are learning a lot of things in life. It could be of some... Uh, that some events like Jacob, the result of God's purpose in their life. And again, God has a higher purpose compared to your purpose or goals in life. He has better plans for you and me. And it is not often as what we think. Amen. We desire something, but again, it is not for our own good. Isaiah 55 verse 8, please. A very familiar verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. Why? Because God is present and He is everywhere. And what will be our goal? Our goal is to come to terms with that. All you have to do is to accept it and trust in it. This is the only thing. As Christians, we know that God is with us. He is the Emmanuel, amen? And that is the, His promise to us. He is always present in our struggles. He is not leaving you, amen? God is just testing you. God is just trying you. So you must be thankful for that. So, be, so the better thing to do is what? To trust Him. And to hold towards Him.
No. We have to understand that you have to, to pick yourself up. You don't need to stay in the corner. Don't allow people keep on mocking you. If you know you've been called by God, then stand up and preach the word of God. Who are they to tell us what to do? You have your calling, God called you, then do and follow God's calling in your life. We don't care what people say. Amen? Don't be bothered. Although sometimes we are really bothered. We are also affected by what other people uh, saying against us. But again, sabi ko sa sarili ko, bahala kayo kung ano sasabihin niyo sa akin. As long as I'm doing the will of God, then I will do it. I don't care. Dust yourself off. Amen. And get back in the saddle again. Kasi natural talaga yun eh. Bumabagsak ka because God is teaching you. But you have to get up. Huwag kang mag-stay doon. Amen? And do the purpose that God is preparing for you. Again, what's wrong with many of us today? Okay? What's wrong? Our problem is ourselves. Ourselves. You know what? God is there for you. And many times you have to dust yourself off and keep moving. Amen? And that's what winners do. And so long as you refuse to stay down, you find your strength too. See? God is dealing with him here. Here in verse 26, as we continue, 25 and 26, And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, you know, let me remind you, okay, here in verse 24, I forgot. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Jacob was, was not the first one who wrestled with the uh, angel of God here. But God, or the man, okay, was the one who wrestled first towards him. Why? God is, some, is trying to get something in the life of Jacob. His self-will, his selfishness. God is trying to get that in his life. In here, verse 25, when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. It looks like on the match. Looks like the, uh, I mean, Jacob is prevailing. But again, only in the eyes of men. But again, the angel of the Lord can easily turn uh, the wrestling match on his side. But again, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Amen. You know, this is another the special appearance of Jesus in the Old Testament. It was God in the human form. You know, God gives us trials. Point number two, God gives us trials because we are worthy of them. Amen? We're worthy of them. God will not give us trials in order for us to be in trouble. No, no, no. No, no. God gives us trials because we are worthy of them. Again, 
you have to understand that if you think negatively about your struggles, then that's it. It's so hard. Maybe you might think differently. But again, we have to be positive on those problems or those struggles that we are facing in life. Again, if you don't see God in your struggles, then you need to redefine them until you do. The great causes in our lives cost something. We have them because like Jesus, we are worthy of them. Amen? Why? Our problem is something that yet too often we seek affirmation with that's or, uh, what's already in our minds. That's the problem. We don't want to be challenged. That's what we are. Amen? Uh, don't challenge me. Mm -hmm. Don't do something against me or else. That's what we are. And that's our nature. We don't want to, um, a larger cross to bear. And we don't want anybody to disagree with us. That's our nature. And we don't want to be uh, jostled or to, uh, I would say, push against someone roughly at all. We don't want that. But again, but that is not life. That is not what God's design. God gives us trials because we are worthy of them. Not to have them is not only unrealistic in life. That's why it runs contrary to the teaching of Christ. Why? Even the Lord Jesus Christ carried those burdens on his back for the sins of the world. God gives us trial because we are worthy of them. If God gives you a job to do, then do it. Amen? You are doing it to please God and not to please people around you. And He will bless you in time. You know, when God wants something in us, sometimes He will take it by force. until you will understand and realize that these things must be taken out from you. Verse 26. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. The angel of the Lord here reminded Jacob, that this opportunity only happens once in a lifetime. And it will not happen once again. God is reminding Jacob that without him, he cannot do anything in his life. The same thing as what, the same thing uh, uh, in our lives as well. Yes, you cannot do anything without God's help. Now, let's proceed to verses 27 to 30. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Maybe when the angel of the Lord asked him about his name, okay, maybe he's hesitating because he is uh, ashamed of his name. Why? Because he is, the, the, the meaning of his name is deceiver, cunning person. But again, because of his boldness and his desire to be blessed by God, then he gave up everything. That's what God wants us to do in our lives. To surrender those things that will destroy our lives. Now, in verse 28, and he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince hast thou power with God, 
and with men, and hast prevailed. Verse 29, And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Point number three, God will provide blessings. But again, these blessings are not the uh, material blessings that I am talking here. I'm, I'm talking about spiritual blessings that we can have in our life. You know, those material blessings are just, uh, uh, it's just a bonus. Amen? It's just a bonus. If you have material blessings in life, then that's it. But that is not the primary blessing. So what we can learn from them? Again, without struggles, you will never achieve anything. That is true. Without struggles, you will not achieve anything. Why? You might be poor, but it has thought, uh, taught you the great value of generosity. You might be sick, but it has given you great faith and transformed your prayer life. That's true. Di ba yung magkaroon ka ng matinding problema sa buhay, that's the time na grabe yung pananalangin mo sa Panginoon. You might have endured a great loss, but it has taught you to what? Taught you the precious value of time. So without struggle, you will never achieve anything. Take note of that. They fought until the breaking of the day. Can you imagine that uh, scene, that fight that happened there? That match over there. You know what? The reason why we can see that Jacob is still holding on. Why? Because Jacob doesn't want to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, release or to surrender uh, something in his life that God wants to remove from him. Looks like he's winning the battle. I mean, the match. But again, the truth of the matter is not no. This is our problem sometimes. We thought, uh, we, we thought that we, are, we can content God. We thought that we can outsmart God in our life. But no. You cannot do that. Amen? Be thankful to God. When God is dealing you, then be thankful to God. Lahat naman tayo nagkakamali eh. Sino ba rin ito na nagkakamali? Wala. Ako, marami ako pagkakamali sa buhay. But again, it's because of God's grace. So, so kanyang biyaya, narito pa rin ako. Kaya nga, sino ba yung mga tao nga para i-control kanya sa yung gagawin sa buhay? Eh? Hey, amen? Who are they? No. Another thing, God uses blessings to test you and bless you. Again, Jacob's plea here, Lord, bless me. You know, testing and blessing are two sides of the same coin. And for those of us who know Christ, all we have to do is what? All that we have, all that we do, all that we hope to become. Okay. Everything must be for the glory of God. It's worth it, amen? You know that... Verse 30, 31, as he passed over Pinu, uh, I mean verse 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. 
You know, it's just by the grace of God. But again, the secret of winning is by losing. What I'm trying to say, in God's standard, winning the battle is by losing. What I'm trying to say is that when God deals you, surrender everything to God. We are not expected to merely enjoy the fruit of someone else's labor here. But again, we are to labor for the glory of God. You know, this is the blessing here. The angel of God said, you will be no longer called Jacob, but Israel. Amen. Amen. Two comp Hebrew compound word, Israel, Sarah, which means uh, to rule, and El means God. But again, in the Hebrew uh, language, okay, the word God is not the object there, but that is the subject. So Israel simply means God rules. Amen. So if you really wanted God to work in your life, then let God rule in your life. That's why life is a series of struggles. And we wrestle many things. It is a human condition. But again, the problem for us is to understand and to derive the meaning from struggle. But praise God, with those struggles that we had, we've learned a lot of things. Amen? We've learned a lot of things. So if you know somebody who is struggling, help him, help her. Amen? Wag mo pagchichismis. Tinutulungan mo na makatayo muli. Ganon dapat ang ginagawa ng mga magkakapatid sa Panginoon. So again, as we end, here in verses 31-32, And as he passed over Pinuel, the sun rose upon him, and he halted upon his thigh. Therefore, the children of Israel eat not of the sinew which shrank, which is upon the hollow of the thigh, and to this day, because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew that shrunk. Okay. Because it's dealing with, with us here. Okay. You're not stronger than God. Amen. You're not stronger than God. Again, the blessing here is this. Whether we are struggling in life, God is always giving us some, a lot of chances in order for our lives to be right towards Him. We have to yield to it. You have to follow it. Our God is always faithful to each and every one of us. So you must be faithful to Him. No matter what you do, God is always faithful. Amen? I'm, I'm not worried of everything. You know what I worried most? If I will not be able to do the will of God in my life. That's what I worry. The most in my life. I'm so thankful. 
for God, for everything that's given to me. I have my family, I have my wife, my son, I have a church, and I have the ministry that God entrusted to, to me. It's just a great blessing that you have to thank for in your life. God will never leave us and he will not forsake us. Those struggles in life, take it positively, not negatively. Shall we all stand? Our Father in heaven, thank you once again, Lord, for your goodness in our lives.